So problem lists. We'll talk a little bit about the problem list here. So basically the, the core objective here is to maintain an up-to-date problem list of current and active diagnosis. Is, is. Um, the main thing that it's looking for is on the major problem. So they do not care about the other problems and the diagnosis tab. All that this is looking at is the major problems tab of the system. And you'll see that in the measure coming up here. So um, just know that that it's looking for either no major problems or it's looking for major problems on there. That's how it's going to identify if it's up to date. So what we're adding is since, since you need to have something on that, that major problem list is we're adding the ability to put in no active major problems. So if I come into your office, you're going to be able to put in no active major problems. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, but that's where you're going to be able to put that in on the, the problem list and that's what it's going to be measuring. So if the patient has a problem, or if they don't have a problem, they're just looking at information on that major problem list to see if that's filled out. And the measure, the statistic on this is that more than 80% of your unique patients um, by that provider have at least one entry or indication of, have an indication that there's no problems or they actually have recorded structured data of what that is. One of the things that I wanna mention at this point is how many people are recording their major problems, other problems in diagnosis with ICD-9 codes? We got these guys, okay. This might be something that you guys want to go into is actually start recording things with ICD-9 codes because later on in the list, when we get to the menu items, there's going to be a way to actually pull patients through the patient inquiry and show a list of patients based off of a condition they have. Now, you, the easiest way to do that is by using an ICD-9 code. So if I put in 250.00, I can find all my patients that have diabetes. Um, if you have every person's putting diabetes in the, the clinic in different ways into the system by typing it, so one person puts in DBM, another person writes out the full word di diabetes, and then another one puts in D2, that's going to take a lot of work from you guys because that's going to be like three or four different reports. So Really my word of caution is you either all get on the same page on how you're gonna enter in um, problems, but there's so many different problems that I think it's easier to just start putting these in by the ICD-9 codes. So, um, and that's, and kind of looking forward at stage two and stage three, we kind of think that that's probably where they're gonna be going because the main purpose is to get everybody on this so that we can have structured data. So that's probably gonna be more of a structured data set instead of just free text. So. That's that. Here's the denominator. So this is talking about your unique patient count that has one, at least one clinical count encounter in that time period. Um, it's done by the provider. And then it's talking about the office visit that falls in between that to and from date. Uh, and then the unique patient count is the number of unique patients seen in that time period. So I'm gonna kind of, if, if these, de these denominators get repetitive after a while, so I'll just kind of say, all right, it's the same old stuff. And then we'll pass that around. And then here's the numerator. So there's at least one item on the major problem list, or there is an explicit documentation of no major active problems. So it's really looking at the major problems list. It's not looking about the other problems or diagnosis list.